Yes, I need to keep talking about this game because I'm so, so obsessed with it. The most impressive part about Pizza Tower is that there are no bad levels, but some of them are better and more memorable than others. So just like how the game was always ranking my performance, it is now my turn to rank all the levels, from the least good to the absolute best and most fun to play. Just like all my rankings, there's many things I'm taking into consideration. But the one you have to keep in mind is that my own experiences and preferences play a big role here. I P-ranked all the levels in Pizza Tower, so I'm confident I can give a fair verdict here. Only rule is... no bosses. I think all of them are fantastic and equally fun, but... you know, peers and apples. I think they deserve their own different discussion, and besides, we all know the final boss is the best in the entire game. So that leaves us with 20 levels to talk about. Does that sound good? Good. Then I better start with... I know I said in the last video that there are no bad levels in Pizza Tower, and I still stand with that. But holy fuck, I have a special hate relationship towards Pizza Scare. This level, when I played it for the first time, I couldn't help but think, oh, this is just a spooky version of Pizza Scape, but more confusing and less memorable. And that's the thing, this level didn't leave a strong impression of me at first. Only things I remembered were the music, and get ready, cause I'm gonna praise the music a lot in this video, and the backgrounds, which, let's be fair, they're incredible and genuinely unnerving to look at. But the level was just very confusing to navigate. I thought it was fine, but that's it. That is, until I decided to P-rank it and... Pizza Skirt turned from a fine but forgettable level to another nightmare! Holy fuck, this is an experience I don't want to repeat ever again. This level was like a marathon where every step felt like trial and error. How to avoid the ghost that follows you everywhere, get rid of the stupid idiot dumbass ghost knights so they don't bother you later, get the bats during the stairs so that you can save your combo meter, hope this bat here kicks you in time to get to the secret room, be careful during this jump so you can get to the janitor, turn exactly at this point and master all these jumps while you're about to get to the janitor room. And let me clarify, all of these steps are hard as fuck to execute while going fast. Pizza Scare was the most unforgiving level of them all, and I did not feel powerful nor excited when I P-ranked it. All I could do was think, I'm so glad this is over. Another level I mostly remember because my P-rank experience on it was dreadful! Peppy Boot Factory isn't bad or anything, I honestly think it's fun. I really like the unique gimmick where you're transformed into a pizza. It's very satisfying to spin on enemies while keeping yourself in the air. Especially during that secret room where you obliterate a bunch of stupid rats with that transformation. But the escape sequence is the part that I hate. Because when you're not transformed into a pizza, there's a ton of room for error where just one mistake can cost you the entire P rank. These conveyor belts that have boost pads can fuck off. It's even worse near the end, where you need godlike reflexes or take it slow in order to avoid them, which isn't recommended since you have to hurry to save your P rank. There's also the Peppy Bots near the end, which can screw you up if you don't kill them in time or parry them properly. The janitor room is really out of your way, so you have to be fast. And the entrance to the second lap uses the bomb gimmick, which is like... my least favorite in the entire game. And the fact that you have to do all of that during the second lap really added a ton of stress. Just like Pizza Scare, this was another level I was glad to be done with. Ancient Cheese doesn't stand out at all, it doesn't do anything very memorable. Its theme doesn't feel well executed, the music is good, but not one of the best. And it is the main user of the worst gimmick in the game. Bombs? I hate them because it's so easy to screw them up. And you need to throw a lot of them here, so... Yeah, nothing else to say. Ancient Cheese just exists, and it can be a small pain to peer rank, but nothing as bad as the previous two. Or the next one. Oh shit! That's an appropriate name, cause that's what you'll be screaming all the time. This level doesn't pull any punches. The ninja slices that can only be effectively killed by parrying, the Mr. Pinch that looks like Mr. Burns that can fuck up your escape, how strict the timer is when you try to get the secrets and your own, or how the slower nature of the sticky cheese transformation can make you lose your combo if you're not fast enough. I spent so much time on this level, but you know what? In the end, I lost my mind. Literally. Aside from the Mr. Burns, which are so fucking annoying, 
I didn't think this level was bullshit. It was really, really hard, sure. It made me rage, no doubt. But I really felt rewarded by the end of it. I felt that I got that P rank because I truly earned it. Also, the music here is incredible too. Known Forest is a fun level whose only issue is that it feels eternal. Due to its nature, many rooms feel very samey, but it still has a ton of good qualities. The most obvious one, the introduction of Gustavo and Brick, and that's what I like. Known Forest was truly built with them in mind, and I like the small pizza delivery missions you have to do. It added to the thrill of keeping the speed going. My only real complaint is that P-ranking it can take longer than needed because, again, this level feels like it takes forever, and I can recall two instances where one fuck up could cost you the entire run, which meant doing everything once again. But you know, I still had fun with this one, and the level still deserves credit for giving us the greatest image of them all! Lari. When I played Gold for the first time, I thought I was gonna HATE P-ranking this level. But believe it or not, it didn't take me that long, maybe 10 attempts or so. Golf is one of those levels that seems impossible to do perfectly, but in reality, it's pretty straightforward and very forgiving. It really becomes easier when you find out Griswold keeps your combo meter intact and hitting him restores it. Getting full Primo perks is not mandatory for all the courses, and the rest of the stage is not that difficult. Even the escape sequence is pretty cool. You only have to do the golf section once and that's it. There's even a trick that lets you skip that part completely, and that's very appreciated. I also love the music in this level, it's so jumpy and not bit, it fits the tone so well. So yeah, while golf is nowhere close to my favorites and it didn't leave me a good first impression, it was a pleasant surprise I enjoyed in the end. Also it's hard not to love the Doom reference in the title card. What can you say about Fun Farm? This is perhaps one of the simplest and slowest levels in the game, but it's still really damn fun! Mort the Chicken isn't just an adorable callback to a game I didn't even know existed, but he also makes for a great power-up. His unique gimmicks such as double jump and using Mort hooks made the level more interesting. So yeah, this level is probably one of the easiest, like, maybe the second easiest perhaps? But I liked it, and I'll forever remember it because this is a level where I thought I got a P rank and instead I got an A rank. I forgot to get the treasure and I realized it too late. Bloodsauce Dungeon is a level that apparently is a bit divisive within the fanbase. But I don't know, I quite like it. The main theme, Dungeon Freak Show, is an incredibly epic song. I like how the level involves Pepino going underground while the escape sequence is climbing all the way back, and how that opens new routes that keep you at full speed all the time. And that's what I like, the level feels a bit too claustrophobic and it's very easy to fuck you over while trying to P-rank it, but it's still designed in a way that doesn't feel like bullshit. If anything, this level taught me a few new tricks involving crouching or falling faster, and that was some useful knowledge. Bloodsauce Dungeon is a simple level that was very fun with an amazing background song. It's cool. Oregano Desert. I love it, but I kinda hate it. I've never been a fan of desert areas in video games, but this one is honestly really damn cool. It has so many things that make it super memorable. These enemies that summon thunderclouds, entering supermarkets to find toppings, these cheese enemies that do a poggers when you're close to them, entering an alien spaceship, big kicked by chaos all over the place, and the firemouth pepino transformation is so cool. I like all these things. But I also kinda hate them, cause every single one of them can easily screw up your P-rank. Oregano Desert is a very unforgiving level to do perfectly, but at the same time I still liked it because it's so fast, frantic and I never tire of the song that plays here. Overall, this is a great level for a hellish experience to P-rank. Deep Dish 9 Unlike the pizza this level is named after, this level is really good and surprisingly short too. I think that's because there's rarely any stops here. 
Deep Dish 9 will have Pepino constantly blasting through rockets to destroy asteroids, use an anti-gravitational lolly to reach new heights, and use teleporters in creative ways, and the music is so memorable to me. It's like a mix of something you'll hear in Diddy Kong Racing's final word. I think it's only issue, if you can even call that an issue, is that this is one of the easiest levels, and again, one of the shortest. But that doesn't make it any lesser. It's still a fantastic time. Fast Food Saloon just screams Yeehaw! in everything! The theme, the design, the enemies, the transformations, and the music. There's never-ending action, and the gimmicks are so simple but fun. What sets Fast Food Saloon apart is the Winnie Mount transformation. A giant sausage that only moves left and right but is super fast, and combined with time gates you must cross in time, it made for a frantic experience all the way through. It was so exhilarating jumping from a winning mount at the right time just to fall in another winning mount and continue blasting through everything while killing stupid rats. Fast Food Saloon is a near flawless level, but it's only the 10th spot because... I just like the other levels more. Waste Shirt is also one of the easiest levels in the game. But god, it does a lot of right! Right off the bat, this level stands out by having a more depressing atmosphere from the rest of the game. And the music really sells you on that feeling. It's so different from the rest of the soundtrack. Tombstone Arizona is so melancholic and sad, but still hyper and epic. I swear, you can put that track in a Castlevania game and it will fit perfectly. When this part hits, you really feel it. The level is also very memorable in its own right. The Pepino Ghost transformation is a bit slower compared to others, but it makes the level design more dynamic. Surfing on corpses is just as fun as the winning mounts, and the escape sequence is also unique in which you have a young ghost chasing you. He's a less lethal pizza face, but still adds a ton of tension because he can completely screw up P ranks. For all these reasons, Waste Yard earns the ninth spot on this list. Refrigerator, Refrigerator, Freezerator. That was pretty difficult to pronounce. I adore snow theme levels in video games, and this one is no exception. What I like about this level is how fast paced it can get, bringing out interesting mechanics with the thermostat so you can open new paths. It's pretty cool how near the end it throws a barrage of snow enemies at you, and then it puts a wonderful twist. It makes you eat a spicy pizza that puts you in a state where you can kill snow enemies on contact, but also lets you jump like the screw attack from Metroid. And I really love this! But it also does something not many levels do. So, during the escape sequence, you have full access to the Pepper Pizza transformation. And it is exhilarating to run past everything while you're near invincible. You can take any route you want, but here's where it gets interesting. During the second lap, you lose your Pepper Pizza powers and have to escape normally. So depending on how many blocks you destroyed in the first lap, it can make the second one harder or easier. And that was very cool and original. I think the only bad thing about this level is that the music that plays here is kinda forgettable. But still, Refrigerator, Refrigerator, Freezerator gets the 8th spot on the list. There's no debate here. The Crumbling Tower of Pizza is the easiest level in all of Pizza Tower. There's no treasures, there's no secret rooms, you have plenty of time to escape, and there's no second lap. But God! The feeling this level makes you experience is hard to describe. After all the hardships you went through to get to this point, after one of the most cathartic boss battles you have experienced, this level is a celebration of your achievements. The Crumbling Tower of Pizza is a merge of everything you have done. Almost every single gimmick of the game is used here. Almost every enemy appears once, making it all feel like a proper goodbye. What I love the most about this level is the music. Bye Bye There is a variation of It's Pizza Time, but instead of feeling tense and anxiety inducing, this one is more smooth and confident. You already went through it all, so this should be a breeze to you. It's hard not to get hyped seeing many people you have met through your adventure follow you till the exit, and how invincible you feel during the entire escape. I especially like the part in the end where the tower has nothing left to stop you and it just pans a bunch of pizza boys. It's so satisfying to run through them all. Again, the crumbling tower of pizza is easy as fuck. 
but the way it brings an end to the game and the way it makes you feel makes it one of the best final levels in the platforming genre. As the first level in the game, John Gutter leaves a fantastic impression on the player. It is simple, it doesn't have any unique gimmicks, and thematically it's nothing special. But the design is so fun! As a beginner, it is the perfect playground to test out what Pepino can do. As an experienced player, it is a joy to peer rank. Due to its simplicity, it is immensely fun to do everything it has to offer. Hell, even doing the achievements is incredible. Finish the level under 2 minutes, get to a combo of 99, I feel this level encapsulates what Pizza Tower is all about. It's simple to play, but it's a challenge to master. And for that I consider it the 6th best level of this game. If this list was only about music, Pizza Escape will most likely be a top 3. I'll put it like this. If it's pizza time didn't exist, Pizza Escape's music could probably be the game's main theme. These songs are so iconic, so unique, and they only get better as you progress. It just comes to a point where they build up and then smack you with... What? But music aside, Pizza Escape is a fantastic level with no flaws. The Night Pepino transformation that is only used here is so creative and makes the challenges way more interesting and tense. P-ranking this level is a challenge, but one that never feels like bullshit. This level is so good that it makes Pizza Scare, a variation of this stage, look pitiful in comparison. It has a great gimmick, one of the best songs in the game, and... It's just so good. The fifth spot is so well deserved. Don't make a sound is a level you can't compare to anything else. Besides the obvious Five Nights at Freddy's inspiration. Right off the bat, there was cuffed so off guard by the title card. It's so whimsical and stupid, but the eerie words don't make a sound told me I was getting something completely different. When I saw the level was based on a kid's pizzeria, I thought, nah, don't tell me we're doing this. And eventually, I was right. Not too long after, I found myself being chased by animatronics trying to kill me. And to make matters worse, every time I will get caught, I will react like this. <laughs> this was the first level I genuinely tried to take slow because I was so tense, so anxious. Having monsters chasing you was more than enough to make the experience immensely memorable. But then, it throws a curveball at you. Right at the end, it gives you a shotgun, and during the escape sequence, you can pay back all those animatronics for the bullshit they made you go through. It is so, so satisfying, I can't describe. Even if don't make a sound, it's a level who loses its care factor the more you replay it. It's still so well designed, incredibly unique, the atmosphere is second to none, and even the backgrounds are filled with so much detail. And that first impression it gave you is one you never forget. War. Simple word, but it tells you all you need to know about this level. What makes it so special is two things. First, you get a shotgun right at the beginning. Second, as soon as you get your gun, a timer starts to count down. And all you have to do is combine your shooting skills, reflexes and speed to get to the end. War is a level that is always keeping you on the edge as you struggle to keep going and find ways to increase the timer. And unlike the crumbling tower of pizza, this one has secrets and treasures to find on top of doing a second lap. Did I mention that the secret rooms here don't stop the timer unlike other levels? And just like refrigerator, refrigerator, freezerator, the second lap removes your power up from you, making it a straight race to the finish with no stops. War stands out for its unique setting, for how different it is from the rest of the game, and for how immensely memorable it is. This level almost made it in first place. It's my favorite for sure, you will think my bias will win. But no, the first place is just that good of a level. But make no mistake, Crossco very well deserves this spot due to how incredible it is. When I play this level, I feel cool. It has so much style and it is ridiculously fun. The highlight here is the music. It's my absolute favorite in the entire game. I fell in love and fully remember it the first time I listened to it. It's so groovy that it feels like something taken right out from Sonic Rush, which is appropriate since it samples stuff from that game.
This level is never-ending action with tons of cool challenges. From running in the water, avoiding explosions, parrying cannonballs, even rolling instead of a barrel while destroying everything in front of you. And the escape sequence is super exhilarating, keeping you at max speed at all times. Crosscode may not be the deepest level of them all, but it has style, it's incredibly well designed, has tons of fun challenges, and it is immensely satisfying to play. I love it so, so much. But only one level surpasses it in my opinion. Isn't it funny how Gustavo and Brick have one of the least good levels in the entire game, but also the fucking best? The Pig City is excellent! Everything about it is perfect, which is a miracle because this level is long, really, really long, but it never feels like that. It's so fun that you can spend hours on it mastering it and it will still feel like minutes. While this level is technically Gustavo and Bricks, the Pepino section is also fantastic. There's so much to do, from grinding rails, taking taxis, use red balloons, and eventually get thrown into jail in a super comical way. And then Gustavo and Brick make it all better by introducing new gimmicks, power-ups, and obstacles. I really like how the city is just minding its own business the entire level, but as soon as you trigger the escape sequence it becomes a hellscape and all the pigs start to panic running around. I even like the detail where all pig city scenes are cartoony, but the pig cops are photorealistic, it's brilliant! There's also the secret pig cop room that surprised me so much I had to make up a new word to describe the experience. Joy scare. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> Another incredible thing about this level is that there's two completely different songs that play here, and both of them are right up there as some of the best in the entire game. They're so different, but still fit the level so well while being super memorable. There's nothing else to say. The Peak City is a level that at first was gonna get second place, but when I peer ranked it, I was able to fully appreciate every single aspect of it, which is why it destroys my own bias, making me say, this is the best level in Pizza Tower. So what did you think? Is there a placement you disagree with? Which levels are your favorites or which ones piss you off the most? Let me know in the comments. I'm very positive many of us will have different opinions about this topic, but I'm very positive there's one thing we all can agree on. Fuck the Fork Knights. Anyway, thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to support the channel, you know, by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, Patreon, that will mean so much to me. Have a wonderful day, and take care! I'll see you next time!